Humans are explorers. It's in our bones. It's in our hearts. It's what connects us all with each other. And it's been true for millennia. And the only thing that's changed over those millennia is the destination. And our next destination takes us off planet. One of the things that I want you to think about is that this one profound fact is that both the journey and the destination to Mars are environments that are completely outside the evolutionary experience of any organism. And I will get back to that. But first, let's talk about what is it that makes us explorers and colonists and not just tourists? Plants. Plants are what enable us to explore past the limits of a picnic basket. What this means is that whether you're going across a continent or going across an ocean, plants enable us to make that journey. The example of the ancient Polynesians is a really great example. Their multiple month-long journeys across the Pacific Ocean enable us to see and practice what it might be like very akin to what we're going to be doing across the Gulf of Space as we go to Mars. The Polynesians understood the risk, and they mitigated that risk by uh, enabling having a food source that they can propagate and keep with them to make their food source secure. And we need to do the same. So what is it about plants that humans need? More than just being a food supply, plants complete us in the biosphere. They enable a self-sustaining environment. How do they do that? What plants do is they capture the energy coming into a planet, and then they use that energy to convert our waste materials, like carbon dioxide and wastewater, into things that we need, like oxygen, carbohydrates. <laughs> Good carbohydrates. <laughs> and water, clean water. Photosynthesis works whether you are in a field in Idaho or you're on an Antarctic ice shelf in an experimental greenhouse or on the surface of Mars or someplace yet we have to envision. Plants also capture other elements from the environment. They take the minerals from the soil, for instance, that we normally couldn't be able to process, and they make them available to us. So plants truly enable us to colonize places that we never would be able to before. So my job is to grow plants in environments that are Mars-like, that we might experience on the mission to Mars, and learn all we can about how those environments impact the way plants grow, the way plants work. And I'm going to tell you a small part of that story. So think about again, we're coming back to this idea that the journey and the destination are both outside the evolutionary experience of any organism, especially plants, including plants. So how do they cope with this novel environment? Plants are actually masters of their metabolic universe. They are able to tweak their physiology in all manners of stress so that they can cope with these new environments. And so what we do is we look at how they do this. So what my colleagues and I do is we send plants to the space station to grow. We grow them in places that are analog environments for Mars. And then we examine just what that tweaking entails. In other words, I send plants to space, go to places like Antarctica, and practice what it might be like to grow plants on Mars. So how do we do this? And what are the kinds of insights that we've gained by these kinds of research? We have a really powerful readout of that tweaking in the patterns of genes that plants use when they encounter these kinds of environments. So think of it as a toolbox, right? Look into, as you look into a toolbox and you see what tools were pulled out for a particular job, it gives you a sense of what was important to that job. Well, very similarly, we can look at plants and see what kind of gene tools, what kind of genetic tools they are using in the response to the environment that we place them in. And so by doing this, we can get a sense of what's important to the plants when they try to adjust to these new environments, and also what's important to us and how we can help plants thrive when we take them off planet. We use these gene maps as guideposts and we have these kind of gene maps that you'll often see as these columns of red and green lines where a single line is a single gene. 
So, for instance, here, a gene that's red, line that's red, means that that gene is overexpressed. It's induced in response to a particular environment. A line that's green means that particular gene is repressed. And so, again, these maps are clues as to how plants are responding. So of now, we have gene maps like this for all manner of types of environments that plants will encounter on their way to Mars. Things like the microgravity of space, things like ultra-low pressure environments like we envisioned that they have in a greenhouse, for instance, on Mars. And even we've grown plants in soils that have been amended with components that we know from the Martian regolith to see what that would be like to grow plants on Martian soil, in Martian soil. So those are the kind of gene maps we have. In addition to mapping kinds of genes expression, we have another tool. We can also take plants and grow them on the International Space Station, and we can see how they physiologically change in just the way they look. What do their patterns of root growth look like? What do their shoots look like? By doing this, we can take gravity out of the equation. And taking gravity out of the equation when you're looking at plant physiology or pretty much anything, it enables you to see not only what's important to growing plants on space, but it gives you an insight as to some of the things that might be modified that you couldn't see on Earth. So gravity of Earth can mask all manner of different types of aspects of plant physiology and metabolism that you wouldn't normally be able to see until you took them off planet and grew them in microgravity. So, these are the kind of tools that we use. So let me tell you a story of one of the things, one of the insights that we've gained about the change the way we think about how plants grow, not only in space, but how plants grow here on Earth. First, I want you to think about what does a plant look like growing in microgravity? What do you envision, right? Most people think something like this, right? They say, well, if there's no gravity, those roots must be growing all over the place. There's no gravity, there's no guidance, they're just all random. But what we actually see is this. So this one particular photograph shows you two phenomenal things. One is that, you see how those roots are growing away from something else? They're growing down the, the plate. But keep in mind, these are growing on the space station, so there is no down, there is no down but clearly they're growing away from where they were planted. Second, you see how they're kind of jogging to the left? They're making that sort of little, they're not going straight down the plate, they're making that little jog to the left. That's a phenomenon called skewing. Why is skewing important? Well, more than 100 years ago, this guy, Charles Darwin, who was really interested in how plants grow, he did a whole series of experiments with his son, Francis, and they discovered that plants do this skewing behavior when grown in a certain type of manner, on slanted plates. And they found that plants will do this little jogging to the left thing. And they came to the conclusion, yep, skewing. It requires gravity. It's a gravity-related phenomenon. And for 100-plus years, we all assumed gravity was required for, for skewing. But now we know that gravity is not required. So what are these plants doing? And why, again, is this important to Mars? Well, when we look a little closer, again, what we see is these behaviors, these behaviors of skewing and guiding away from other cues, is associated with changes in their patterns of gene expression. So when faced with a novel environment like spaceflight, what plants do is they reach into their genetic toolbox and they remake the tools that they need to see the cues that they're given, because they don't have what they're used to. They don't have the gravity that they're used to, to, to using to navigate, so they have to use something else. Think about this as analogous to you're in a dark room, you can't see, so what do you do? You navigate with your ears a little bit. You see with your ears. The difference being, though, you'd have to grow a new ear first. And this is what plants do. They grow the tools they need by dipping into that genetic toolbox and making what they need. For instance, plants turn on genes that encode light sensors in their roots, where they normally don't make those kinds of sensors. And so this enables them on, on a microgravity environment to use light as a signal. Light's coming into the top, they can see how to grow away from that light. And that takes them away from where they were planted, and that's important. 
Also, these genes that we've, been, we've associated with skewing, we found that some of these associated genes also help plants navigate from where they're planted even without any cues. So without light, without gravity, without anything, a plant will still grow away from where it's planted. And this is important because we didn't realize, until we send plants to space, we didn't really realize the full extent of these fail-safe mechanisms to make sure that when you got planted in the ground, you grew away from where you sprouted, and so you didn't deplete all your local resources. And that's pretty cool. So how does this make us better Martian gardeners? We're learning what it takes for plants to survive on the journey, and we're learning how to make them thrive in the destination. And we're also learning how to help them help us thrive. There's been decades and decades of work on this kind of research, and been done by many hands. And when I think about all we have all done in this field, as we try to take our biology and explore off the planet, it makes me proud to be human. When we leave Earth's orbit, we will take plants with us. But before we do that, we need to consider more than what we just need to take on the journey. We need to consider what it takes to connect all of us here on this planet before we look towards another. We are all explorers. And no matter where your journey takes you, we have to think about it and keep the spirit of exploration in our hearts and feel it in our bones. Because it's what connects all of us to each other. And only a shared mission will get us to Mars. Thank you.